Among webcasts on bioorganic chemistry, we've focused most prominently so far on proteins and enzymes, polymers of the amino acids. In the upcoming series of webcasts, we'll turn our attention to another critical class of bioorganic molecules, the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are built from monomers called monosaccharides or sugars. Like the amino acids, monosaccharides contain both nucleophilic and electrophilic functional groups and may undergo polymerization to form biopolymers called polysaccharides. Such polymers are used in biological settings for energy storage, structural support, signaling pathways, and other functions. In addition, sugars are part of the building blocks of the nucleic acids DNA and RNA, which carry genetic information. Structurally, monosaccharides consist of an aldehyde or ketone attached to a contiguous series of CHOH groups. On the whole, they always possess the formula CH2ON, and you can think of them as oligomers of formaldehyde, the simplest aldehyde. We name the monosaccharides according to the value of N in this formula. Three carbon sugars are also called trioses, four carbon sugars are tetroses, etc. You should recognize right away that the basic structure of sugars introduces some intriguing stereochemical issues. Each internal carbon atom, that is, every carbon atom but the first and last, is a stereocenter. In fact, much of the structural diversity of the sugars is derived from their unique configurations at these stereocenters. Early in the history of biochemistry, it became necessary to distinguish sugar stereoisomers by drawing out their structures. Although early biochemists understood that stereogenic carbons exhibited tetrahedral geometry, these chemists did not use wedges and dashes. Instead, they used a convention that employed bonds drawn in the plane of the page called a Fischer projection. To explore the nature of the Fischer projection convention, let's take a look now at the simplest monosaccharide, glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde possesses only three carbon atoms and is a member of the triose family. It possesses one stereocenter near the center of the molecule. Depending on the configuration of this stereocenter, we may call glyceraldehyde D or L, just as we did for the amino acids. The molecule we're looking at here is D-glyceraldehyde, because this compound rotates plain polarized light in a clockwise or dextrorotatory fashion. To generate a Fischer projection of D-glyceraldehyde, we must imagine looking down on the molecule from above so that the four bonds from the stereocenter form a sort of cross when projected toward our eye. In three dimensions, we would see the hydroxyl group and hydrogen atom coming toward us, and the aldehyde and CH2OH group going away from us. Although Fischer projections are usually drawn without wedges and dashes, they always imply that the horizontal bonds are coming out toward you, while the vertical bonds are pointing away from you. Imagine the horizontal groups as arms reaching out to hug you. Furthermore, we almost always place the aldehyde near the top of our field of vision, at the top of the cross, and the CH2OH group at the bottom. Here are a few additional examples of triose sugars with D-glyceraldehyde provided as a reference. Notice that the D and L designations of all of these refer to D-glyceraldehyde. The D and L nomenclature always refers to the lowest stereocenter in the Fischer projection. When the hydroxyl group on this stereocenter is pointing to the right, we call the sugar D. When that hydroxyl group points to the left, we call the sugar L. As you can see for D-lactic acid, these letters are independent of whether the compound in question rotates light in a dextro or levorotatory way. As we move to longer sugars, it's important to keep in mind that the D and L designations refer only to this bottommost stereocenter. 